bridge grafting is going to be essential because um, there's been a lot of mouse damage and some rabbit damage. Um, and if you don't repair anything, that's um, a third or a third of the tree that's been girdled or less, it will pull itself out. But anything above that, it will um, kill the tree actually. Um, if you don't, because you're taking away their life support, basically the, um, the cambium and the xylem have been chewed into and that's where all your nutrients, your living cells are. The biggest thing is to be patient with yourself and maybe even to start practicing that cut, um, which is a nice long tapered cut, about an inch and a half, um, to use a good sharp grafting knife, sharp edge, uh, sharpened on one side, not jackknife. Um, but, um, and just to be patient with yourself, you know, um, not to get frustrated if you feel, but you want a nice smooth cut. Um, you can buy some rootstock and plant them into the ground and then graft those into the tree, which um, is a lot easier for guys that don't have a lot of experience because they've only got to make one, um, one cut on the rootstock and then graft into the tree as opposed to at the ground level and then interarching that up into the wound above it. As soon as that sap really starts flowing, you, you see green out on your trees, you can go out and test it and see if the bark is pulling freely away. Um, you don't ever want to graft a tree when the bark's not slipping because you, you have to have cambial contact. Um, and as long as, to do top work, um, about two weeks after bloom is the cutoff, but if you do bridge grafting, as long as you have good sign wood, that means, um, you know, nice dormant sign wood that's been kept with moisture and also been kept about 35, 36 degrees. So you can graft, I've grafted to the middle of July. It might be again this year. <laughs>